To defeat your opponent, you must become your opponent. What's your wow rabbit? The five most brilliant moves of Alexenko, this up and coming Russian prodigy. How's he going to get on the candidates? Time will tell. This guy is really talented. Do not write him off. And this video will show some of his magical moments. Play along if you want to. See if you can solve the puzzles by pausing at the right time. And let me know afterwards which is your favourite puzzle. Like and subscribe to support these videos and chess.com in general. This first example is a nice example of hunting down a dead king. The dead king is over here stranded in no man's land. It can't survive with all the bullets flying around its head. But we still need to finish it off. It can wriggle out if we don't play accurately. So what is the best way to force checkmate here and the way Alexenko played it? Now pause again if you need to. I'm not always going to say pause during this video. You're going to have to be with that mouse ready or your finger, your finger on the button. But what is the move? It is g4 check and this is a very nice way to take away this square you may have been thinking about queen to h8 check but after king to g5 let's now try using harry the king comes to g4 there's no obvious finish here but with the move g4 we take away that square so black actually took with a bishop in the game and now queen to h8 king g5 and don't you just love finishing a game with my favourite move, Harry 4, checkmate. So very nice little tactic. And if King takes, it's checkmate in two moves here. I'll let you guys try to work that one out. It's black to play in this position. This is maybe a rather short and sweet tactic, so I'm hoping most of you will get this. Keeping them a bit short and sweet in this video. I hope you don't mind too much. Black to play and win. I often get asked, oh, Simon, well, these videos you do, you're always telling me there's a win. In a real game, if I'm playing in a competition, someone's not going to come up to me and say, you've got to win here, you've got to win, you know, because that's cheating. So how good are these tactics? Well, the thing is, you've got to look at your pieces and they are like a burning fire. And in this position, we can see that the black pieces, nearly every black piece is around that king. So you should be thinking like, look at that fire, it's burning bright. It's time to burn the king down. And you should be looking for these forcing moves. And the forcing move is queen takes g3. This opens the way for the rook on f6. And after rook to f1, I'm sure Alexenko was having a little burning smile on the inside. This next tactic is very pretty and it reminds me of a famous game that a world champion has actually played. And if you can name the world champion, who he was playing and the tactic, the year, any information, bonus points in the chat. These are for the real chess nerds out there. I'm one of those guys. And it's white to play and white is really trying to force his pawn home. So he wants to exchange queens and he needs to avoid any sort of annoying checks towards his own king. So do pause, it's a couple of part combination. In the nation, queen to a8 check, and the king is forced to move because if the queens ever come off, then Ari the a-pawn is gonna become queenie boy on a8. It's gonna come all the way there and turn into a queen. So after king h7, this is where the real special move occurs. Can you see it? And it's a move that might come as a thunderbolt towards black i can imagine being black here and thinking oh i've got a perpetual check coming up with my queen it's a draw and then all of a sudden the queen flies into the corner and you're like whoa oh oh no it's happened to me before this so it, it, it does occur and the point of this move is after king takes queen looks crazy but we have knight takes f7 and knight takes d6 and this a pawn is going to queen it's also quite amusing to see just how bad the black knight is. It has no squares it can move to. So a very beautiful picturesque combination, I think, there from Alexenko. He's, he is a force to be reckoned with. Don't, don't rule him out totally in this candidates. Well, in this next position, it may look like black is a little bit cramped, but this is a jack-in-the-box tactic 
Black's piece is a sort of cage there, but as soon as you rip that lid open, rah, there comes Jackie Boy jumping out of the box. And this works because the White King is actually quite exposed. All of his pawns have started running down the board, and it's a classic case of one side overextending their safety, their position. So what do we do here? Well, the first move is knight takes f6, and this is a very nice idea, and it involves a double knight sacrifice. So well done if you saw this, but did you see the continuation? That's the important thing with tactics. Now, white does take the knight on g5, and here comes the second blow, knight to g4. A brilliant idea, attacking the knight, allowing the queen into f2, and now the white king becomes helpless. Pawn takes knight. Queen f2 check, king only has one square, black wins the rook back. And even though materialistically white is doing okay, with threats of the rook coming in and the queen attacking all of these squares, the white king is just far too exposed. Two heavy pieces, meaning rooks and queens, attacking an exposed king is going to be checkmate in most examples. The game ended, knight c4, queen h3 check. Black took a pawn with check and then brought in another piece, rook f2, to threaten a checkmate on g2 and also the knight, so white resigned. Uh, the jack-in-the-box tactic there. You might look caged, but as soon as it unsprings, hello boys, I'm coming to get ya! Timing is so important in chess and again in this position it seems like Alexenko has his back against the wall and this is when players are often their most dangerous. His king has a lot of pieces lined up against it, but the white king is also a little bit little bit wobbly, shall we say, on its legs. Maybe had a couple too many shandies there. So what move here really turns the tables and actually gives black the attack? Can you see it? Bishop to b4. And this is really a line clearance move. The queen can now enter into h7, and it also gains time because it gets in the way of white's pieces. After pawn takes b4, we can simply see queen h7 is winning with a dual threat of the rook and checkmate. There's nothing white can do. So really just a winning move. The game continued knight takes c7, but after knight takes a6, check, check, is it mate? Is it mate? Hello mate, is it mate? Is it mate, mate? Uh, no, it's not mate. The king goes there. White goes, all oh, right, okay, I'll resign then. Thank you very much. Cheers. Cheers. Nice game. Nice game. Alexenko, some brilliant moves from the underdog here is the wild card in the candidates. Has he got the potential to win the candidates? Yes, is the answer. If everything goes his way, he could be a real shocker. He's clearly talented. He's young. He's hungry. On the other side of it, he's also a target. Everyone's going to be thinking, I need to get a point against him. I don't know, though. Don't rule him off. That's all I'm saying. He's got the power. Now, do like this video, please do, and please do subscribe to the channel. It means I'll be back with more. Obviously, if you hate me and my presentation, I can, you know, give me the thumbs down. Just pretend you're that Roman and I've, you know, a gladiator you don't like and that's it. You want to get rid of me, you know, that's it. Done, done. Get rid of this ginger bearded fool. You can do that. I don't mind. But anyway, thank you so much for watching this and I'd love to hear your comments below. Um, it's going to be a fascinating candidates tournament.